The Los Angeles Auto Show that is happening in full swing right now is a great indication that we're not done with the new electric car makers coming to the market and competing not only with Tesla but with all other great EVs that are available from legacy manufacturers and established EV startups like Rivian and Lucid. Let's take a look at all electric cars that are at the Los Angeles Auto Show right now. Which ones are fantasy and which ones can turn into reality and add amazing choices for us, the consumers. And we're gonna start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward, including our weekly electric car news. First, one of the best things that happened to electric cars at this year's Los Angeles Auto Show is something that I'm proud to have been a part of, and it was the very first of its kind electric car awards. And the best part was that the consumers had their voices heard by being able to vote online and this time nobody asked for a recount that's new there were nine categories and all had a great variety of electric car choices yours truly was selected to host the ceremony and i had a great time on stage hosting the show and announcing the winners one of the other great things that happened to electric cars at the show was sandy monroe just walking around no security or anything it was great to hang out with him face to face, which we almost never get to do and even taped a couple of videos, which I will release in the next few weeks. Let's start with one of the biggest EV unveilings, which belonged to a company you've never heard of before from a very unlikely place. VinFast, which name sounds more like a window cleaning product than a car company, but it is a Vietnamese automaker that is coming to the United States with some force. Now, I know this is triggering a lot of skeptics and rightfully so but this company has a few things that others did not have when attempting the same for one it's got tons of cash it's backed by the Vin group a gigantic company that owns hospitals universities and many other investments in Vietnam including this automaker that has already produced tens of thousands of cars at their factory in Vietnam. Secondly, they have just unveiled plans to build a local factory here in the US in a couple of years and have just announced their US headquarters in Los Angeles, California. I had a great conversation with their US CEO who unlike many other startup CEOs has come across as humble and genuine. They have unveiled two electric vehicles, E35 and E36, that both will have over 250 miles of EPA range and should be priced between $45,000 and $55,000 accordingly. Both cars are styled by Pinion Farina. They're aiming to start deliveries in about a year, but what's already in production are these adorable coffee sets. Before we move on to the next big EV unveiling from the Los Angeles Auto Show, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Too Simple, the world's most advanced AI-powered autonomous driving solution for heavy-duty trucks. Its technology has already been applied to haul freight autonomously for UPS since 2019. Too Simple was the first autonomous driving company to go public in 2020 and has an impressive list of investors, including Volkswagen's Trayton Group, Nvidia and UPS. For more information, check out the link in the description of this video. Let's move on to another EV startup, and this one we have heard of before, but this time around, Fisker has unveiled its production intent version of the Ocean SUV with a completely different interior than the one we saw before. I loved the original interior, so I'm a bit disappointed, but I do love the center screen's ability to rotate from vertical to horizontal. Because I already do it all the time. See? The big news was that the starting price will indeed stay at under $30,000 after the US tax credit and so will the monthly price of $379 for the flexible lease with $3,000 down, which, much like your Tinder date, you can walk away from at any time. Now that Magna is in charge of production of the ocean and Fisker is a public company, there is very little doubt in most people's minds that it will actually make it to production. But many are still wondering why Hendrik Fisker has switched to Magna after originally announcing that the ocean will be built on Volkswagen's MEB platform. Well, you know me, if there's a question in my head, I'm going to, you know, ask it.
Now, originally, you were thinking about putting this on Volkswagen's MEB platform, but then later you changed it to Magna. Tell me a little bit why you made that decision. Well, you know, the Magna platform was very flexible. Magna gave us a lot of flexibility to say you can do what you want with that platform. So it ended up being really a fiscal platform because we changed so much to it. Uh, whereas if we were gone probably another platform, it would have been more difficult or maybe you couldn't change anything. So this was really about flexibility. Uh, and, and really fitting into what we wanted to be for our design. All right, before we get to the other EV startups that were at the show, let's talk about the EVs that were there from the big boys, most of which I saw for the first time in person. Unlike General Motors that had absolutely no electric vehicles at their huge display, not even a Bolt, Ford was very much proud of their electric Mustang Mach-E and the F-150 Lightning. I got to ride in the Lightning for the first time at the indoor track and it was pretty cool. The Toyota Twins were there as well, the Toyota BZ4X and Subaru's Solterra. Now Solterra's display was absolutely gorgeous. I literally just wanted to set up a tent there and spend the night. The floor and the back wall were all one flat display and it would go through the four seasons one by one, which I thought was absolutely beautiful. Both cars are okay, you know, nothing special, except for I think they will sell them like there is no tomorrow. Another pair of twins were from the sister brands Hyundai and Kia. Both brought their concepts, the Hyundai 7 and the Kia EV9. I'm not going to bore you with all of the specs since these are just concepts. Also, I got to see the Kia EV6 and the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Love the specs, love the price and what they do, but... I just can't get over the looks. Those are just not for me. Nissan has showcased its Aria, which unfortunately is not going in production for about another year, which was disappointing because I think it will be one of the best sellers in the EV market. But I got to check out the interior and was pleasantly surprised by how solid and nice it was. Nissan is now taking reservations at the starting price of around $46,000, but the cheaper model, which was expected to be at around $40,000, has not been announced yet. All right, let's talk about the rest of the smaller EV startups making their case at the Los Angeles Auto Show. Let's talk about the Indy One. It's one of the better looking designs that I've seen at the show, but I really couldn't get much information out of them except for they do not have much of a financial backing. I don't see anything unique about their technology that they're talking about, so we'll just have to wait and see. Now, the best looking EV that I saw unveiled at the show was the Mullen 5. As a matter of fact, it was the Ziva's top SUV winner despite the fact that the car wasn't even unveiled until after the results were in. So essentially, the winner in that category was a shadow. Now, if you remember, about three years ago, Mullen has unveiled a two-door electric roadster, an EV that they were going to import from China, but that never went anywhere. But at the end of the day, I found my dream car at the Barbie Extra display, and extra it was. I don't know how I can get on the reservation list, but I'm gonna have to rethink my wardrobe to match the car and I've already started with this watch. Canoe was there as well, but as I mentioned in my Sunday show, I did not think that they wanted to be there at all, judging by a complete lack in communication from their team. I kind of got the same vibe as I get from my cat uh, when I bring him to the vet. Another new brand that was there was the Edison Future, created by Phoenix Motors, which means that they may actually have a future as they have been developing EV technology for over a decade now just not a full car. Not sure if we need to continue naming the car companies after the names of scientists that people can't spell. All of a sudden, I'm missing VinFast. But even if these will make it to the market, it won't be until 2025. I do have to say that I bet a lot of people wished that the Tesla Cybertruck would look like this EF1T pickup truck. Electromechanica was showcasing its single seat solo EV, which my assistant Michael talked me into driving. I wasn't very impressed, but I can see some use for these in overcrowded cities like New York or Los Angeles. However, the price is gotta be closer to $10,000 rather than what it is now, which is more than the brand new Nissan Leaf. They also brought the e-roadster with about 154 miles of range. I absolutely love the electric take on the classic cars and 
they are accepting pre-orders right now at $150,000. The Imperium Motors, a Canadian EV importer, was at the show as well. They're going to be importing their electric SUV built by the Skyworth from China starting at $35,000 with over 200 miles of EPA range in just a few months. It will be followed by the electric pickup truck, but there is not much information on it just yet. And during the Zivas presentation, the Alpha Motor Corporation has unveiled the Saga electric vehicle, which is their third unveiled EV. However, I really have not heard anything from the company that will indicate that it's anything more than a 3D project at this point. If you want to talk about any of these cars or people that you've seen in this video, you can do that every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific time during our subscriber hangout live. Don't forget to set a reminder. You can find it on my channel's homepage. All right. Looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.